This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasts with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 286 on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in beautiful, snowy, slushy Pittsburgh, PA from the Mayhem Studios live this wonderful Tuesday evening. And I got a whole crew of people from all over geographical locations. First of all, let's go by uh, distance. Uh, the wonderful Chilla, the gadget hound extraordinaire working for Mm-mm Bank out there. And uh, how are you doing today, Chilla? Not too, not too bad. I guess going the distance, I'm, it's it's closest to furthest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm definitely closest. I think. And Unfortunately, everything is icy all over the place over here. So yes, it is. And coming kind of to us, out there. coming to us from Newcastle, PA, is uh, mm-hmm. Katie Dudas at K Dudders on the Twitter, our social media expert. Hi, they got like twenty feet of snow up here. Twenty feet? <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it's like a, a foot at least or so. Wow. That yeah, was pretty impressive. It was like you hit a point coming up here and you're like, oh, it's winter. Oh, this is where the snow went. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and also with us, you hear the name several times. And it's really funny, as, as, as he pointed out this week, I think on Twitter or Facebook or the Slack, I can't remember. Uh, but, uh, you know, we started this show because we were tired of the opinions of the uh, uh, left and right coast and wanted to th- get something for Pittsburgh. And so we're bringing it back around as joining us from California, not California, PA, is Alex Cars, uh, graphic designer, websiter, podcaster, extraordinaire out there. In, uh, well, where are you? I know you're typically in the Long Beach area. Well, I am coming to you from Studio M. The M stands for Mountain. And yes, we had snow a couple weeks ago. It was fun to be up here when it actually snowed. Because I'm not, I'm not used to that at all. No, I wouldn't imagine. Um, the being... snow is now gone. So now it feels almost like typical Southern California weather, except I'm up on a mountain. Jeez. Well, I can't wait to get you involved in this, find out your awesome things of the week, and uh, thank you for joining the show for the first time. Uh, so, uh, this is your awesome cast. We talk tech, gadgets, social media, all the fun stuff here. You can check everything out at awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. You can also drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, at awesomecast on the Twitter. We have an awesomecast Facebook and a great Facebook group. I'm putting some stories in there all the time. If you guys get in there, let us know stories you're interested in. Comment on the stuff that we have going out there and, and so much more. Uh, also, we're live here every Tuesday at uh, live sorgatronmedia.com at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We're usually pulling it together, getting some conversations going. You never know what we get into before the show. And, uh, of course, we're streaming as well, replaying over at riversedgepgh.com. Also available, look for the Rivers Edge on TuneIn app on your iPhone or Android device. And there it's uh, that's uh, Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. after Funny Money. I actually got to meet uh, one of the guys from Funny Money this past weekend. Uh, Katie and I went out to the Rivers Edge one-year party. Uh, mm-hmm. Our friends, your Jagoff, were out there as well uh, doing a podcast. A lot of great music out in Millvale, just outside of the city. Um, uh, uh, Katie, what was your impressions of uh, uh, meeting the Rivers Edge crew and 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 checking out their their uh, their digs over there. Oh my gosh, that space is so cool. It, it's in uh, you were telling me it's an old furniture store, so it's very there's odd shapes and sections and risers, but it works really well in that space. There's a lot of uh, there were several artists working when we were in there, and um, the crew over there is really nice. A great group of people. It's it's good stuff, good stuff. It, it was a fun party. Thank you, Brian, over there. And they actually had well. The thoughtest thing was Chilla. You were there in in retrospect, actually. Uh, as <laughs> I, I think I you saw, saw the, I saw the tweet as I was having Valentine pre Valentine's Day dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, so so yeah, we there was um um uh, they put the awesome cast on uh, a TV there on a Roku. Uh, so people could check out one the interview I did with Brian and and uh, us as a new partner on the station. Uh, so it was weird to like kind of be standing over there and be like, 
Uh, yep, that's us over on the TV. Hi. Uh, you know, so and somebody kept standing by the TV. Yep. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did we, did we tweet those pictures? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, we're we nerds. Did. We, we did. did. Hey, uh, yes. I have a question for you. So mm-hmm. now that you guys are on TV, does this mean you guys are going to be up for an Emmy? Soon? Well, Is I don't think blow? so, because we were on PC TV in the past. And actually, we should be again. We, I gave them a bunch of episodes for this and other shows that we have on the network. Uh, so we are on TV, per se. Um, so, I, yeah, nothing. We haven't seen anything. We haven't seen any Pittsburgh uh, area Grammys or anything like that yet. So we could at least get a local Emmy, right? You think? You think that would happen? But we can always hope for the best. Or we could. We, we could. Also, thanks to our friends over at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. You can support the show if you're finding the value of getting entertainment out of it. Help us grow the show. Uh, thanks to our friends at Thistle Seed Business Development. And uh, Mike Fedor at the Mike Fedor Show on the Twitters as well. Been supporting the show on an executive producer level for a good while. So let's get into the show with your awesome things of the week. We got a lot of stuff going on. Katie's going to go last. Chilla, what is your awesome thing? So my awesome thing of the week is a nifty little controller. It's made by Horapad, and here is the box. What it's a the name! Horapad Ultimate. Um, so let me make sure I get this in frame. So you can pick this up at your local Apple Store or from pretty much any um, Amazon site. Um, the device itself would remind you of pretty much any modern day controller. Um, you got your left and right bumpers, your left and right triggers, A, B, X, Y, um, two thumb pads, um, or the two, two joystick type things. And then the analog D pad, um, pairing is super, super simple. Um, turn it on and hit the pair button and it's Bluetooth. Um, I've used it with the Apple TV, with the, my iPad, um, and I've used it with my MacBook, um. Uh, with some emulators with some games that support it um <clears throat> there's a lot of websites out there that have um lists and lists and lists of who supports the mfi controller spec from an ios perspective um has a, a battery life i've been able to play for hours and had zero issue um there is a little a bar on it the cool thing that i thought was it actually charges over um, lightning connector. So the same mm-hmm. connector that you use for your phone or for your I, for a modern day iPad um, is used for this. And the reason I thought that was kind of cool was because Apple's gone to the same spec on their mouse, keyboard, and trackpad. So it's kind of lowering that number of cables you have to carry with you, especially as we see kind of the the cable world get fragmented with USB-C. And if you read the news last week about the the Google employee that fried their Pixel (laughs) by charging it with a um, cable that I think they got off Amazon or somewhere and it was not made correctly. Um, So with that, it's kind of nice. I can carry one one or two cables to connect and charge a multitude of devices. Kind of like, of course, like micro USB, but like I said, I'm already carrying the cables for other things. It, it just makes it makes it nice and easy. Awesome. So, so with that, like, like I said, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm using um, it on a couple iOS games. I, uh, the Star Wars Legos works well. Um, I had the, the emulator um, on Mac works extremely well. It's very easy to map depending on what you're – and I, I've used it to play TurboGrafx-16 games, so it's easy to map everything nice. in. See, now, I, I, I'm in the spot where I still haven't bought one for my Fire TV. Uh, but if I do, because I feel like paying like uh, 30 to $50 for, for, for uh, a gamepad like this isn't worth it enough for just Fire TV stick, okay? Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to find something that is compatible with both that or Android devices, I guess, in general, and also with the Apple TV and the iPhone, because I, I think it's inevitable. I will probably have the newer Apple TV. Cause I really, I really, it, it fits into what I want to do with, with my TV, my gaming, I think. And, and, and it feels like kind of the next step for that. Uh, do you know, is this, I saw this is officially licensed by Apple. Is it Apple only? It is. It is currently Apple only. The same company makes one for Android, but it seems like 
nobody yet is making a device that is cross all platforms. So it's probably it's probably smart for maybe get like one of the cheaper game pads that's compatible with the stick for now. Uh, so I yeah. can experiment with that until until the day where I get the Apple TV. And I, I actually like the idea of having both because I think there's some interesting stuff on on Amazon, especially Amazon's um, announcing all the time, like some are, I think uh, with the um, Unity engine or it was a Crytek. I, I can't remember. Um, but there's a new, you know, uh, 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 there's a new service they were just announcing uh, that takes advantage of their AWS cloud services in gaming uh, that they're trying to bring people in on. And I kind of want to have a toe into that world to see what's going on as well. Uh, so, but no, that, that that looks like a really cool pad. And that, ah, geez, for not really being in the quote gaming space, they got some pretty cool supported project products. What are you finding for support? Like, are you finding that there's a lot of games or just games you already bought happen to be compatible? I'm finding there's a lot of games out there. Um, I wish there was a better, a single site. Here, here's If, if you want to send uh, spin up a site that specializes just in what games support the controllers and what the best best ones are, there's a handful out there, but they're not real well done. So it's a, it's a corner of the market that's kind of left untapped at this moment. Um, I found a couple games that I already had um, supported it. Uh, there, I wish there was more support. Uh, Marvel Champions, if you're if you're out there, please bring support. Um, I'd like to see more side by side fighter support. But like I said, there's a lot of the Lego games support it. Um, the old uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic supports it, and then pretty much a large magnitude of, of the Mac OS support it. And then it's pretty clear what, what uh, Apple TV stuff support. I think on the iOS side is where they kind of lack documentation on the support model. Maybe that's what I need. Cause I, I get a little tired of grabbing my corded Xbox controller just to plug it in and play some games on the Mac. And sometimes it doesn't work mm-hmm. so well. So that could be interesting. Awesome. Go check that out again. It's over on uh, Apple's own shop. Or a pad ultimate wireless game controller, forty nine ninety five over there. I'm sure you can probably find it a little cheaper on Amazon as well. You can find it a little cheaper in some places, I think. And then I actually the one of the reasons that I picked it up too was because it was ten dollars cheaper than their competitors. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! So the, the Steel Series, Nimbus, and stuff like that. Um, the only the only bad rating that I heard and I do kind of agree with is the triggers. There's like I would say a quarter of an inch give on the trigger itself Mm. before it actually kind of kicks in so it's just some it's just like any other controller it takes a little bit of getting used to the nuance of of how the triggers and how sensitive the buttons are awesome go check it out guys alex cars what are you bringing what goodness are you bringing us from the uh fine state of california well uh late last week i was listening to the Art of Wrestling podcast with Colt Cabana, mm. and the episode on that was actually a preview of a series that, uh, I guess, a mini series, I guess you'd call it, that he was that he has on a, a service called Howl, uh, Howl Premium to be more specific, over at Howl.fm. Uh, and off the back of his uh, preview, I decided to check it out, uh, and it's actually pretty cool. So there's a lot of like different kind of miniseries and specials, comedy albums. Uh, there's a, uh, there, the, the plan is for all of the archives of like Gear Wolf and Wolf Pop, although for some reason there's some technical difficulties or something, so the ad-free archives aren't quite available yet. But so far what I've checked out on the service has been really cool. Um, I went ahead and listened to the three episodes of uh, Cole Cabana's Pro Wrestling Fringe, which is uh, the miniseries that he has on the service. Uh, I also checked out his audio documentary on the Gathering of the Juggalos, which was very nice. interesting to listen to. Oh, I, I, uh, I need to check that one out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good, and it's kind of funny because he originally he originally recorded the documentary long enough ago that his little audio tag at the end for checking his stuff out. Uh, he still directs to his old uh, URL of welovecult.com instead of um I also listened to, because it was the featured episode on the site, and I think it still is, uh, Mark Maron's interview with President Obama, which was actually really, it was a really cool conversation to listen to. 
Um, and then I, the last thing I checked out was uh, uh, Sinbad's Make Me Wanna Holla comedy special. So uh, a nice variety of, of content on there. And it was interesting kind of for the aspect of, uh, so it's kind of a, a subscription service. And I guess the plan is uh, $4.99 a month. Uh, you can get, you can sign up for a free week now, or you can get a special code from different places. For example, the Art of Wrestling podcast had a special code to let you get a free month. Nice. So, yeah, so it was, it was very interesting to me because, uh, like, the idea of actually charging, like, a subscription rate for podcasting, just because, you know, it's interesting, like, kind of with the shift in how people do, uh, basically do business with podcasting. And also, this is a service cool. where it's, you know, Mark Marin is kind of the premier podcaster at this point. I know, I think this is the service where it's his back catalog, you said, right? Uh, yeah. You know, when you pay for it. So that's that's some really kind of high-end stuff. And and we're talking, and, and you also get access to to albums like Al Magical, Aziz Ansari. I mean, these are established mainstream pretty much names and just a lot of great comedy Otherwise, Chris Hardwick's even a part of this. Um, yeah. um, uh, there's a lot of recognizable names. So these are quality people you want to listen to, interesting things. Um, I, I think that's worthwhile. Now, for me, I, like I saw it, and I kind of scoffed a little bit at the 4.99 because it's like I don't need another subscription right now. <laughs> yeah. But it is so. It is something that is okay. Am I going to listen enough? And it's comparable. If you have a hole in your listening slash watching schedule around. Um, around you know all the netflixes and hulus that you pay for then i think this is great and, and i know a lot of people that are big 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 fans of the earwolf podcast of a lot of these uh comedians and and I, me as just going in as maybe just a wrestling fan that maybe wouldn't seek out a lot of this other stuff i'm not sure but man i think it's a pretty good thing they got going on here and and i, I listened also to the, the the preview episode uh they had of, of the uh, pro wrestling fringe i'm really interested in that like it's i'm really fascinated oh, yeah. Um, in my day to day, I'm kind of running into a lot of public radio people. Um, mm -hmm. and I really do see that as more of an audio art form than what we do around here. And, and I have a really big appreciation of that more and more these days. And I'd love to hear like, like, uh, like the Colt Cabana thing, you know, is doing that, that audio storytelling, not just, you know, discussions and conversations, which I think are awesome in their own right. Right. Uh, obviously we're doing it right. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm very interested in that, and, and I don't know, maybe one day it'll inspire me to do something along that line, too. But Yeah, uh, um, yeah I also wanted to uh, mention, because I was also, like, with, with, with that, I was also checking out the uh, app that they have for it. Uh, it's, been, it's been pretty cool so far. Like, the app, like, obviously, like, you know, lets you get to the content that's available on the service. Which, and so I was checking it out, and I remember the first, like, when I was thinking about using the service, the first thing I wanted to make sure I could do on the app was to uh, download the episodes onto the phone so that way I can actually listen to it because I don't have very much way in, in the way of uh, internet up here. So right. it was good to be able to download and be able to listen to this stuff later. That's so good. The, 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 one, like, the one weird thing about it was when I was listening to something on, on the app, uh, the little notification thing that lets you kind of play or pause it wouldn't go away after it, even after I quit from the app. And so they did a, they actually just had an update for the app, like as of like today or so. And I think that might have fixed it, but it was, it was, it's definitely been, it's, a, it's been a pretty good experience with it so far. You're going to have that, especially with new services like this. So, and, oh, yeah. and I mean, geez, Stitcher, I, I just did a recorded a basic ergonomics that went up this morning about uh, how Stitcher has failed me by being down for four days. And that's a service that's been around for a while, you know? Uh, yeah. So maybe I'll talk about that at some other point too. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, awesome. Go check it out. How.fm. I, I think I'm probably, I'm going to at least uh, uh, probably get that code and uh, try out the free month and, and listen at least to the, to the wrestling stuff, get a, get a feel for it and see if it's worth my uh, $4.99. Uh, but at least get the start of it and check it out. I think that's awesome. Cool. Uh, Katie, Katie Dudes, at K Dudders, you got a thing. I got a thing, yeah. That happens occasionally. <laughs> um, I don't know if any of you caught the Grammys, but um, Lady Gaga teamed up with Intel and for this David Bowie tribute. 
and it's one of the most insane as far as um, performances go and tech performances. Uh, they were talking about how they used um, holography, uh, robotics, 3D motion graphics, live video processing, just for this um, segment of the Grammys. And um, at one point, she's not wearing makeup, but suddenly like makeup drips across her face to give her the lightning bolt, and she's a spider kind of crawl across her face. And uh, even the LED ring she was uh, were using was using um, kind of control the action behind her. But it's just an insane amount. And, it, and a lot of people took this as just a big Intel commercial, which it kind of comes off as. <laughs> because even the intro is, is very, look what we did. Without this, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to turn Lady Gaga into doves. <laughs> It's kind of the whole um, because this is the you know Intel obviously doing a lot of this stuff too, um, but it's kind of like the whole like CD-ROM, you know, hey look we're doing this just because we can. And Intel's not new to this either. Intel with their mm-hmm. back with their MMX stuff was like, look, we got these uh, instructions in our processor. Look at all the fancy multimedia things you do, and they show the highest of high end that we'll never touch as consumers. Right? That's what's yeah. happening here. Like, look, look at what we're making possible these days. You know, um, I, I I saw a f- similar in, uh, uh, video that was brought up uh, with some clients the other day, where it was a wonderful violinist. And she was did a choreographed dance in a fountain as a flash mob kind of thing, but and we talked about it. It was the UE Boom wireless speakers, so they had set up a lot of them in a public place and had this performance. And I'm sitting here the whole time, and they show like the the, the directors and everything, like kind of queuing it up and them setting it up. But then like you have this wonderful, wonderful three to four minute performance in front of all these people, and you forget it was about a speaker. Right. <laughs> so uh, and I don't know how, how well this came off. I'm looking at some of the uh, gifts and imagery that are over here on um, on, on, on the Web page over at uh, Business Insider that you have uh, posted mm-hmm. here. This is awesome. It, it's amazing. Like the things they were able to do with her, um, her, like I said, especially with her face and just the um, it looks like liquid just dripping straight across her face. Right. And um, it just it's fantastic. You know, it, it, a lot of these things come become consumer. Um, items once they kind of trickle down from big things like this so it'll be fun to see what actually we can get our hands on in the future that's amazing yeah we were showing the gif over and over again of the spider coming out of her eye sorry missy (laughs) uh so there's that um and uh that's cool um i I think she's always on the forefront of things i know people were surprised when she actually came out like as a normal person doing the national anthem at the Super Bowl, um, then we just bring her around to this. Um, she, I, I, I really take uh, uh, Lady Gaga as like you know full on artist, you know, mm-hmm. uh, at this point doing really really interesting creative things and, and and really kind of pushing the limits like that. And it's really cool to see. I'm loving the gyrating mobile keyboard that I'm looking at. Yeah, isn't that cool? That reminds me because I, I remember whenever I went to a Manson Marilyn Manson concerts, they'd have like a keyboard that was on a spring that they'd kind of <laughs> throw around a little bit. So um, that's awesome. Uh, so go check that out. And my awesome thing of the week is Air Dog. <laughs> it is a drone. Okay, it's a drone. Gets us started, right? Uh, it, <laughs> the, the the title over at uh, Engadget, Air Dog is the action sport drone GoPro needs to beat. Uh, but uh, so you know, we we talked about. It. I don't know if we talked about much on the show, but like these drones that can like follow you as you uh, skateboard or something. And this one, I think, uh, this is a really interesting way how the, how it does this. So it does a tether to you. And it's not like, you know, it's not attached to you physically or anything like that. But as you go, you wear like you have a wearable, um, a a wristband kind of thing uh, or smartwatch or whatever the case may be. And uh, it sees that and that's how it tracks where you are. And it basically follows you because you have that thing on your wrist. And in their example, they're out in the desert with this air dog and they're um, uh, uh, following a guy on an ATV doing some stuff. Um, Again, something really cool if you're doing something dramatic like ATV, uh, uh, BMX, uh, you know, uh, you know, a Baja dirt race. Maybe it could be fun to use for that. Something like that, um, you know, and and or if you're a skateboarder, I suppose as well. And it's got a really good camera on it, and uh, and a really interesting way to 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 use this technology um, and kind of fun. And there's actually the Air Dog, and the Air Dog, the 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 wearable actually has a lot of controls on it, so you can kind of you know. Um, 
set the status on where you know what kind of you know percentage it is and around you what kind of angles and stuff uh so it's a it's a pretty cool automated thing you can hang a gopro from it and uh and just uh do some cool stuff so uh so that's the air dog and uh and uh, it's over in engadget they're talking about that so um drones drones are freaking awesome man and, and great there's one that won't crash because it's automated It'll, it'll be interesting to see, though, because one of the things they bring up in this article and I was thinking about, because we reviewed the Lily before that was kind of a concept of, around this. Um, if you imagine that the speeder bike scene from Return of the Jedi and you try to get that drone to follow you through a forest, there's a good chance it's going to bash off a tree <laughs> trying to bank a corner. So you need to use these in a m much more open space. Mm hmm. Um, they do. They can attempt to steer around things or not drop at an accelerated rate and crash into something, but it is something definitely to take into consideration. The Air Dog has a much cooler looking wrist device than the uh, Lily did. Definitely. Oh, this will keep going and keep getting better uh, as we go. So uh, keep looking out for that. And then it's just drone tech. Te it, it, it's going to be the point where. You know, we talked about this stuff trickling down from Lady Gaga earlier. Uh, you know, I, I think this this is one of those trickle down things where just like, you know, hey, look at the supercomputer we have in our iPhone. Right. Uh, look at the supercomputer that's following me around <laughs> uh, in the coming years. And that becomes more affordable. Well, you know what's super and we don't have to wait for trickling down. Good pizza. Good pizza. And that's uh, uh, from our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Mm, my good friend stopped down there the other day, had some uh, some hoagies. Uh, some some great great stuff, um, and and I don't I don't mind stopping by and and uh, and uh, 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 checking them out. Other than here on Tuesday nights, to support podcast day, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Even though a lot of our crew is snowed in this weekend, sorry guys, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, but anyways, okay. uh, go check them out. SliceOnBroadway dot com. Uh, Rico and the guys, though. Hey, if you go enough, like me, they know your name. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and, and they're really awesome and it's a really awesome pizza we're blessed we're blessed here to have uh, a nexus of great pizza opportunities here in the south hills of pittsburgh and these guys are the big ones and also, also over in carnegie pa as well uh check them out slice on broadway.com pj underscore slice on the twitter and slice on broadway on the facebook and the instagram all right let's get to uh so app of the week and I, I don't know how much i can show you guys here but i'm, I'm going to show this over on the on the video stream here uh so i'm going to pull up uh so this, uh, there's this app called quartz and you guys can check out the article as well uh as we're going kind of get this getting this prepared but the idea is and quartz i believe is is its own kind of website magazine kind of thing i know it's come up a lot on my apple news feed uh chilla are you familiar with the publication I am not familiar with the publication. Okay, but it, but it's always had really interesting stories. So I saw this thing popped up, and I, it was one of those things that I sort of uh, immediately dismissed um, until I, I until it kind of popped up to me again, and and I kind of understood what the concept was. So the idea is, as I'm going off mic, pardon me. Um, the idea is that uh, it's a text app for news. OK, now I popped them in here and of course there's an ad because I was playing with this a little before, but there's a little chat that says good evening because I just popped in here. Uh, the Saudi Russian, the Saudi Russian oil freeze agreement didn't prop up prices as expected. And I have a next button and I have something that's a bunch of emojis that looks like something about the uh, the, the, the Russian flag, the Saudi flag, um, oil cans and a, uh, a stock ticker. So if I click that, it'll actually give me a little more information about it. Um, and it comes up as another chat window, and here's another bit of, about oil prices spiking. Here's a graphic of the chart of what you know, exactly how that happened. And I can hit next and go to the next story. And I'll click through this. Uh, Americans are going to replace their gas guzzlers with electric SUVs, whether they want to or not. Again, kind of an emoji kind of response there. I can go to the next one. So you're really, like, if you just want to check in on your no news, um, this is a nice visual, quick way. Jeb Bush tried to revive his struggling presidential campaign with an unusual tweet, and it shows actually the tweet visually here, America, and it's a picture of a gun with uh, Governor Jeb Bush 
inscribed on it. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and one of the responses, other than next, is a what the, and it gives me some more information about exactly what this is about. So a really interesting kind of way to check the news. Like I could see this as I want to say the next one, the next one, uh, the next Twitter tsunami. Uh, it, it went back to is uh, a bunch of people tweeting America, uh, Super Soaker, America. A dog, uh, was that a dancing dog with a top hat? Um, and America, uh, stuffed crust, bacon. Uh, oh, oh, this is the hot dog pizza hut thing. Uh, so there you go. That was the the responses as well. So very visual, very social media minded. And you can you can kind of go through here and just like real quick, like sitting on the train chill. I can see you just kind of catching up with your news, uh, presuming you're connected, of course, or, can, or whatever the case may be. Can it do curation based on? topics and things of that nature or is it just pretty much here's all the news and we're just going to throw it all at you or can i say kind of like with apple news i can say i'm i'm a little more interested in tech than i am in international i don't know oil hmm. well it's uh i think it's it's the general news um but i would imagine as you go like as you respond to things maybe it'll change that um okay they're they're telling you that you're uh, you know you can set up your notifications uh, like on their page for the iphone app um they're talking they're telling you that you know all this is written by humans it's like texting so they set up you know that response tree as you would so it's 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 a bot but it's written by people um, in a fun way, and like I say, you, you saw the visuals. If you're on video, they're showing the gifts and and tweets and everything. Um, I think it's a really interesting way to engage in news a little bit. You're not exactly texting back to it, other than the, the options that they give. But I wonder if there's a point where that can become a little bit bigger. Um, <laughs> Apple Watch owners, hold on, Apple Watch owners, you can gauge the markets with an emoji on your watch face. <laughs> so it's just like uh Marcus looking frowny face right now. Uh I, I think it's emoji. Kind of fun. Yeah, Katie, you were gonna say something? I said poop emoji. <laughs> what would what would be interesting is if you had like if what Quartz did they also did as a the exact same thing as a Twitter feed and a Facebook feed and a Snapchat feed and so no matter what social network I'm on. I'm already there, right? I can just go to their page and see top-down view. Mm -hmm. the The hard thing that I'm finding about news is I don't, unless I'm purposefully telling myself, "Hey, I want to go look at the news right now." I'm more apt to find the news as part of other people's Twitter and Facebook threads. And it may make it a little more sticky for me to use their service if their service was already on existing services. So I didn't have to leave right. to go look at this. And that's the one thing that I'm, I think is going to be the hard nut to crack. And I think it's going to be a Facebook or an Amazon that solves this unless courts can come along. And instead of you hear things being cross platform maybe this is cross social network so it doesn't matter where i already am i can go to quartz's quartz's feed on whatever service and then catch my news there and it would be interesting to see if they could then aggregate the back end to see based on facebook twitter whatever what people are liking most within a social platform and also cross social platform. And it's also, you know, this is, I, I think Quartz is very kind of high business minded because there's a lot of stuff about stocks. For for instance, there's one feature is a markets haiku that you can have come to your watch as well. But I also like the idea of, well, this is so simplified. You have two responses and you get more information. Why can't this be adapted to an app for like, say a Pebble watch or something like as low as that and accessible to that? I would load the app if it, puts the information right here at my fingertips right yeah and i would almost see like there there's there's things where i've been trying to figure out is there a way and i'm i'm looking at probably if this then that is there a way to if there's breaking news that's getting a lot of commentary or a lot of likes or a lot of reads on specific sites is there a way to then alert me to that happening 
that then I can know to, hey, I should probably go read this right away because it could impact my work or my users. So that's kind of where I'm going with this whole curated feed. I want to know, based on technology, iOS and Android, how can I figure out how to make sure I'm in the know as soon as something large is publicized, whether it be a cool new feature, the next version of a beta or a, or a vulnerability um, that's announced. And that's kind of where I'm looking at how I can curate my news that way. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, but I, ha I have to laugh because I'm looking down the conversation, just kind of scrolling through the, uh, the courts, this page here. And a developer experience leader at Uber was like, when will you launch on Slack and Messenger? And I just like the fact that Slack is in the same conversation as Messenger. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I'm playing a little bit with Slack bots, as some of you may have noticed in the general conversation there on the show today. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, trying to figure out like new interesting ways to uh, to, to kind of incorporate that stuff. Uh, side note, ProductHunt.com is a really cool place to find new apps and, and such. And I actually have a couple of things in a rundown from that. So go check that out. So, Alex, you got any thoughts on this? Yeah, it, to be honest, it sounds interesting. The last time I used an actual like news feed app was Flipboard, I think it was called. The, mm -hmm. the app for like iPad and whatnot. I thought that was really cool, but as it is, I get a lot of my news just kind of as I'm scrolling through Facebook and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to kind of use something like Quartz to kind of maybe better kind of better sort the news. I'm kind of with Chilla about having more like options on creation. But it sounds interesting. It's interesting sure. that you bring up Flipboard because I feel like we always ride that early adopter curve and we suffer from burnout much faster than most people. <laughs> and we're yeah. on to the next thing. But it's interesting because I see at work a lot of people sending me I'm getting, Flipboard must do kind of like their own bit.ly to the and URL shortener. Mm -hmm. um, so I do get a lot of links sent to me from people that are at home in the evening reading tech news. And then they say, hey, did you see this? And I'm like, yeah, that was so two days ago. But that's where they're getting their, <laughs> their information from. They're, they're So I don't know if you're f familiar with a lot of the Android devices. They're now putting it right on like the far left swipe panel. I know Samsung does that on their devices. Um, Flipboard's continued to update for Windows 10 tablets. So it, it, Flipboard's definitely still in the, in the popularity contest and still being used by the masses so it might be just something where we burned out on it too early yeah i'm still trying yeah, to exactly. find my replacement and apple news is almost it except that apple news takes forever to load on the devices that i have because i don't have the most brand new uh ios devices uh so like on the ipad on the iphone i have it just it just oh i gotta wait for this to load and i'm not on there every day right um i don't really have a a uh, method to that. I just kind of go and check stuff out. I mean, honestly, most of the news I'm getting is from email newsletters of stuff here, I've signed here, up for. Here's something interesting to try. And and if you can actually just set an alarm three times a day and try this for two weeks and tell me how it goes. Because I told someone else to do this with a different app and it completely changed the way they work. Set an alarm for 10, set an alarm for whenever you get up during the day. Lunchtime, and when you eat dinner and when that alarm goes off, open up Apple news and make sure you have background app refresh turned on. <laughs> Wait, so did the app just train you to do that? Is, is, no, is that so what's interestingly happening? enough is what you're doing is you're training the app to prefetch. Okay. So if you get in, so, so what I learned over time, right, is I get on the train every morning and one of the apps that what I, that I use for work to read my email picked up background app refresh as a capability. So what happened was every day when, before I would get on the train, I would actually, as I was coming down the hill to the train stop, I would open the app so it could fetch all my mail, kind of like what you're talking about. News has to fetch all the news, right? Right, right. Well, after about a week of doing that, I realized that when I went to open up the mail app, for again, we have a special one for work. It's not just mail; it's a secured mail app. Um, I noticed when I started launching it going down the hill that all my mail was already in there. 
And what background app refresh does is it learns over time of the common frequencies that you use specific applications, and it will then wake them up ahead of that marker. So if you can if you can consistently use the app three times a day, then prior to the, like minutes before that time, those times per day, it's going to go out and prefetch the news for you. It's just all about getting in that consistent habit. Then what would be interesting is because now the app's prefetching it for you, you're more apt to go back in there at those times because it's already going to have the news loaded. And ladies and gentlemen, that just rolled into your tip of the week. <laughs> That's good to so know. If you no, can seriously. be consistent for a week, you will typically then, from there on out, want to be consistent because everything's going to be preloaded for you. But I'm, I don't know if I'm on my phone, if I'm on my iPad. I really just need to figure my own stuff out before my apps can figure out what I do. Because right now, none of my apps <laughs> know what I do because I'm so all over the place right now. Um, so, anyways, uh, <laughs> so it's hard. It's hard to be a coworker slash coffee shop bouncing person. And then that Google now knowing where you want to go, it's not like this is the time I go home every day, right? Here's how traffic is. Mm -hmm. It's just like, uh, traffic is good going to East Liberty. Are you going there today? Maybe? No? Could be? <laughs> sort of? No? Okay, here we go. Um, but, you know, that's kind of stuff I deal with. But I'm very atypical, I, I, I suppose. Um, so we had uh, uh, an email. Uh, yeah, this guy, uh, Ryan Haggerty, I misspoke his name last week. So I'll give him a free plug, uh, HaggertyMedia.com. Go check out his stuff. He's actually got some really cool photo stuff he has going on over there and some video work. Um, and we're actually supposed to be uh, talking with him and some of his crew in, a, in the coming weeks, um, probably in March here over on Awesome Chat. My Apple News just refreshed. <laughs> I just thought I'd do the bounce. Uh, anyways, uh, but no, he sent me a lot of stories that were interesting him about 3D printing, and I, I want to hit on one, of, uh, maybe maybe two of these. Actually, let me let, let me let me hit on the heavy one first, <laughs> and then and then and then we'll get to the fun one. Um, but uh, well, you remember a few weeks ago we talked about there was like a new printing technique that I kind of hardly understood. I don't know if this is the same one, and my 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 science nerds didn't get at me. Uh, yet on this one yet uh, but he hit me this one from uh, Wake Wake Forest School of Medicine um, and the article was briefly discussing um, is briefly discussing uh, uh, 3D printing um, um, in the service of helping with craniofacial trauma so your your head your head getting broken okay um and and uh and and basically bringing it down to uh, uh they're going to uh three do facial and skull reconstruction using 3d printers so the pieces of bone that just got shattered they will replace with things that they're making in a 3d printer with whatever that proper material is that they'll put back in your face. Right. I mean, I think this is something that initially that, that, you know, when you hear somebody has got a steel plate or something, right. Um, I, I, for me growing up, Brutus, the barber beefcake had a steel plate in his face because, uh, because he got in a horrible motorcycle accident before WrestleMania nine. Right. Uh, but that's a whole other story, a different podcast. Um, I, but it sounds like that's the kind of stuff they're looking at. And, and, and it's pretty cool to see that. And it seems like the 3d printing has come around to, to a lot of different things these days. Um, I don't know. Have you guys heard anything else about this biotech 3D printing thing going on? I have not personally. This is amazing. It sounds, it sounds scary. <laughs> we're, it, it, we'll get to that point where we can start building hearts and putting them in, I'm sure. But um, So from that to maybe something a little more fun um, and not as like life changing, I guess. Hey, how about some three D uh, 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 D twenty dice for your uh, for your campaign? Uh, that's fun. Uh, no, there was a, a one that he shared was uh, Laughing Squid has a three D printed D twenty die box with plenty of storage space for stashing actual dice. So uh, they're gi giant dice with little dice inside. Kind of a fun thing that somebody put together. So uh, for you D and Ders and RPGers out there, and actually this is probably a good time to mention we're going to be doing a a uh, RPG session this Thursday night with uh, uh, the guy doing a really cool uh, pro wrestling based RPG uh, that we talked to on Indie Re Indie Mayhem show several uh, months back. Uh, so uh, go look out for that as well. Um, but that also in the 3D space, uh, Mattel is getting into the game. Uh, they're going to release a $300 3D printer that lets you design and create your own toys. 
That's the killer app. Oh, well, we know there's there's somebody in Pittsburgh that's doing this as a kiosk that is in the toy store. But now you can drop 300 bucks and spit out your own stuff. And Mattel has how many licenses? They mentioned Barbie and Hot Wheels as a case in here. But I know Mattel is behind something like the WWE toys. So think you can get a new wardrobe for your John Cena figure or a new you know championship belt or something made out of this. I think this is a really cool killer app for something like this i mean back in the day we always had those kind of like a monster maker kind of things or like kind of an easy bake oven of little plastic dudes that are scary looking right um this is kind of the next step isn't it i think this is amazing like i, th- I think it would be awesome if speaking about wrestling if you could totally just make a you know ryback's body and um somebody else's head and <laughs> But but looking at like things like a Barbie doll, you could really get a customized Barbie doll face because mm-hmm. now they're they're getting a little more um, less traditional. Um, you could actually have one that really looks like you, or, or at least or, accessorize. Think, think if you if you could custom create Legos, like for all the kids that lost like the one Lego piece to their set down the street, you'd be like instant awesome person on your street. Yeah, I think it's the you way just to custom go. print the missing Lego piece. I mean, everything's like kind of like one colored and everything, and and and, and you know, it, it, it kind of limits what you could do there. But like to accessorize the Barbie, um, I know already with the, the WWE toys, they have the ones where they're the interchangeable create create a wrestler kind of things. Mm-hmm. Like, could you just create those interchangeable parts for those create a wrestlers at a certain point? Um, there's already an app available uh, for the creation and configuration of toys. Um, it's uh, called the I have to double check the name. Not Toyland, or is it? But it, uh, Thing Maker. Uh, thing. I think it's the Thing Maker app. So you can go go on there, look at that, and, and kind of see what you can uh, do with it. Um, Alex, I don't know. Are you are you on there? Uh, you got any thoughts sure. on the Mattel uh, 3D printer? Uh, oh, are I, you? What are you going to make I, with this thing? I have no idea, but it's awesome because I I never had the Thing Maker, like the Monster Maker and all that. But I always saw the commercials for it, and so. I'm pretty excited for it. Also for kind of the, the slight nostalgia factor for the brand name itself. Cause it, it reminds me of, uh, it reminds me of when we were talking about the new Viewmaster being a VR kind of device. So stuff like that, where they take the old brand name that people are familiar with and apply it to something new, some new technology, stuff like that is always exciting to me. So I'm definitely excited to check out the thing maker. Awesome. I can't wait to find out how people hack this thing. Related news, Mattel is also supposed to be putting out, I think they just uh, I think there's a toy fair over this past weekend, that's why a lot of this is coming out right now. Uh, but they're they're coming out with another version of the new Viewmaster, which is based on Google Cardboard, so look out for that as well. So, that's awesome. Uh, so, our toys are actually becoming toys when it comes to these things. So, um, Alex, tell me what uh, Microsoft's doing with the Lumia. Okay, give me a second to pull it back up. So basically, I I was spotted I spotted it this spotted it this morning uh, from Engadget. Apparently, my so it's kind of funny because the the headline of it says Microsoft retreats back to the low end with the Lumia 650. So basically, uh, and this is something I wasn't even that aware of, but apparently Microsoft had taken control of the Lumia brand from Nokia. Uh, and so they recently came out with the Lumia 950 and 950XL, but now they're kind of coming back into the low end of things with the 650. Uh, trying to, I was just I was looking at some of the specs, and it's kind of funny. Uh, so uh, the reason it's funny is because uh, you'll get a 5-inch 720p uh, OLED display, Gorilla Glass protection, uh, and there's a there's a 1.3 gigahertz processor uh, snapdragon 212 uh, there's 16 gigs of internal storage and you can expand that up to 200 with a, a micro sd card one gigabyte of ram nfc support which already makes this phone a little bit better than the android device i have because it doesn't even have an nfc uh, then there's an eight megapixel main camera and a five megapixel front facing with a wide angle lens so and it's kind of interesting because the article is talking about how these these uh, uh, specs are are a little less than stellar, but to me, I've 
I've never really gone too far up the spectrum from as far as phones go. So just the specs on it alone were interesting to me. Uh, they did make note of the fact that it's launching in select European European countries this week uh, with a recommended price of uh, about about 150 pounds or uh, about, uh, close to 200 dollars. And but there doesn't seem to be any plans for other regions. So. It seems like they're uh, from the video I showed in there uh, while you're talking about it. Uh, it. It seems like they're really kind of focusing this as a business phone. Yeah, that's that's kind of the impression I got. Because mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you can find phones to do all the, the the fun stuff like your your Snapchats, your Instagrams, and then there's phones that are probably more focused just on uh, just. I mean, sometimes you hear people talk about how they just want a phone that makes phone calls, you know, stuff like that. So seems like pretty pretty basic phone, but seems to be pretty good for what what they're going for. Awesome! Check it out. It's the Lumia six hundred and fifty, and you're probably going to have to get shipped into the states here, from the looks of things. So I bet you that'll come to the states, and I think there's an they're they're about to plan a an, an announcement. So I'm I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if we heard something, especially coming out in the next week um, around world mobile Con- Congress that kind of talks about um, their, their next plans for the States. I've had, I've had conversations around the, the windows phones with, with a number of companies. And even today, one company just says, well, we're not supporting it. Cause we expect it to die on the vine, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I'm 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 half expecting them to announce like a Surface phone since they've you know we have the Surface tablets and they've just started coming out with what's basically a Surface laptop. Uh, I I have a feeling that the evolution of the Windows Phone is going to be Microsoft uh, some kind of Surface phone. So you figure that one out, but all right. Um... Let's stay with our uh, toy theme from a little bit earlier here as I was going through the uh, uh, lineup here. Uh, Katie, uh, wh- what what else is Barbie up to this time? She wants a chilla house. Oh. <laughs> She's got a smart house coming. Uh, she It's another thing at the toy fair that's coming up. Uh, it's a smart home that connects to the internet and a companion app. Uh, you can it'll accept voice commands, uh, including turning lights on and off and activating party mode. Party mode changed the staircase into a slide because why waste your time on stairs when you could slide down? And um, also, this is the other fun thing. The $60 Starlight Adventure RC Hoverboard is a tiny remote-controlled drone that will have the doll flying through your living room with ease in an outfit appropriate for said activity. What? So, <laughs> sounds like Barbie's getting a drone and a smart house. She's so much cooler than we are. The, the, the smart house so. weighs in at $300. Yes, the same price as the 3D printer that we talked about before. We talked about Hello Barbie in the past because uh, you know it was it was you know that interactive version of Barbie using the app and everything, which they're obviously expanding a little bit here. But man, Chilla, Chilla. First of all, I think the most important question out of the story has to be: Does the Chilla house have a party mode? It does not have a party mode. But and here's the one thing: is you know what? Ever since the the different hacks that have been going on around leapfrog and all those different manufacturers. I'm not sure at this point in time, I trust these toys and I don't care if they're from someone as big as Mattel or from a small no name. If they're starting to connect to the internet, unless your name's Google, Apple or Microsoft, I'm not necessarily sure I want it in my house at this point in time. And even with those manufacturers, I sometimes question even some of the things I have around the house. You know what? And and it's funny because I just pulled up an article from four hours ago on silicone angle, whatever this is. And it's like, is Barbie's smart home spying on your kids? (laughs) Launch revised privacy concerns. And that's, that's one of the things that, that I don't think, companies like Mattel have ever had to worry about internet security. And I, I think it, it, 
definitely there there I think there needs to be an additional regulation if you're selling an internet connected toy to a kid there should be some kind of additional scrutiny almost like the and I, and I I know I'm probably going to make people roll their eyes and pound their fists but almost like they have to rate video games like should there be an extra parental control that says hey this thing's going to connect to the internet and broadcast and and report back like a, like an internet safety uh general internet safety guideline like like mm-hmm. like maybe to the point where uh, uh your kid shouldn't play the Sesame Street online Xbox Live game because who knows on the other end so there's like a risk level like or maybe a in a internet supervision level or something like that right right so or make sure you turn this off when it's not in use yeah interesting well, it, i'm trying to remember do you remember on the Simpsons Funzo it was uh, this like toy that was a compilation of all these different things, and it was something I can't remember what part of it, but something that listened to you and sent information back to the company. I want to say it was the Funzo doll. <laughs> I believe it, and I think even Samsung's recently said, you know, if you own one of our internet connected TVs that has a mic, it it is always listening and it is reporting back to third parties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I remember seeing that, and I remember thinking, I'm not getting a Samsung TV. <laughs> nope. Yeah, again, I, I trust Amazon. Well, I trust Amazon to a certain extent. I trust the Google device to a certain, my Apple thing to a certain extent. I don't trust Samsung. There's nothing that gives me trustworthiness in, in, in them, uh, let alone their television division to be secure and have a microphone in my house. Um, I, and I now know. you're going to put it in every kid's toy, which makes me even right. more right. nervous. Right. Interesting. I, it's something that's going to be worked out here. Hey, you know what's safe, though, and what's good, probably good for the environment? Chilla. What's that? Uh, the, thing that the, the thing that you have for the tiny tyke in your house. What do I have for the tiny tyke in my house? The thing right above Barbie. Bluetooth 4.2? No, no, Tesla. Oh, that's Dutters. Oh, that's, I'm Dutters. Oh, that's Katie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I got my names crossed on the document. My bad. Katie, tell me about Tesla's doing. And I'm so happy when a story that I bypass makes it back into the rundown with somebody else. Oh, man. Uh, now we can have, you know, adults can't have a Tesla, but the kid can. <laughs> it's a $500 Tesla from Radio Flyer. It is not as energy efficient as I had hoped and dreamed, obviously, because, you know. Right. Um, Maybe I was confused because I figured um, Chill is probably going to buy this. Yeah. The, the problem is I don't have space to, to drive one of these around. Ooh. Well, this one has a, a working headlights, a sound system, and a spacious interior. So like, what? Can I fit in there, too? Uh, are you between three and eight and weigh under 81 pounds? No. Work on it. Work on it. Those are people. If I can get down under 81 pounds, can I bypass the three to eight roll? I think so. I think that's okay. <laughs> Is it one or both? <laughs> just we'll go with the weight. I bet you'll be okay. You just have so, to squeeze in there. I, I just wanted to say, because I was going to make this comment on the last bit, but it seems even more appropriate now. I had a bit of a, I had a flash of childhood just now, because I remember being fascinated by, uh, radio control cars that had like uh, MP3 player connections, and you could like listen to your music through the speaker on it. And we've come a long way from stuff like that. Wow, I, I missed out on that with that craze. Apparently, um, <laughs> it, I, I, the, the well, because it was like because I remember it was like a, an Escalade brand or something like that. It was supposed to be some fancy, oh wow, kind of car looking thing. I want to point out here, though, in the video, and they have a separate picture on the article, uh, the imagery on here of there's the Tesla with the cover on it. Like, you know, that that I don't want I want to protect my expensive car cover on it. And right beside it is the mini radio flyer Tesla also with the car cover on it in the garage. Well, That's nice. The, the funny part is, is if you read through this article. So so much like every other Tesla, the starting price is four ninety nine. <laughs> that mm-hmm. car cover is an additional 50 bucks. The premium battery is <laughs> $50, but you can get a spare premium for $150. I'm on the page and now uh, there's some fancy wheels we can spend extra money yeah, on. Yeah, you can get you can do a you can do a um a, a silver silver silver, I can't pronounce anything today. Silver turbine wheel upgrade for 15 bucks. You can get a Tesla branded license plate 
for 15 a $25 parking sign. Now, this isn't for the, the big Tesla. This is for the Radio <laughs> Flyer Tesla. <laughs> So Start quickly, up. Start quickly if you if you deck out your 499 Model S for kids, you can get up to about 800 bucks. What if That's I just amazing. go ahead and deck that out, keep it in my garage, take pictures of it, but take pictures of it in the perspective that makes it look like I own a Tesla? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just all about you know, Photoshop it or something. You know, um, I, no, I think you should build a tiny garage. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I bet I could zone for it. I bet I could zone for it in Pittsburgh on my property. Uh, that, that, on that point, I got, I can imagine that conversation. Listen, I need to put a garage on my on my property. You don't have room for it. Don't worry, it's a tiny garage. Just, just roll with me here. By two feet. Yeah, exactly. And I'll just send them that picture of the Tesla by the Tesla. Yeah, I'd be like, no, no, no. It's the small one. Um, all right. Uh, all right. Let's go. Uh, after you get your kid the Tesla, um, uh, what what else? Uh, tell tell me tell me why why four point two Bluetooth is important. <laughs> I'm sorry, I trampled on that one. So so one of the things that Bluetooth has always had an issue with is connecting to the internet. If you think about the Apple Watch of Moto three sixty, um, a bunch of other devices, Bluetooth gets you to your device, and then your device gets you to the internet. Um, Moto th- Motorola put a special chip in their device in their uh, original three sixties that could do kind of a direct hop to the internet, but it required an additional chip in there. Additional chips mean extra power. Extra power means lower battery life. Um, Bluetooth 4.2 specifications have unveiled an architecture within them that give the devices an internet gateway. That gateway does not require a phone, tablet, or anything else in between the gadget and the internet. Um, I think this could be a big deal for... Uh, watches and whatnot in the future. I think it's an even bigger deal with things like uh, light bulbs and kind of Internet of Things appliances, um, allowing that device to, to hit connect directly to the Internet is going to going to be much more favorable than okay, I have to connect this to my phone that then connects to the Internet, or I have to connect all these devices that connect to a hub that you have to install in your house versus them being able to connect direct, I think is going to be a big deal. Awesome. So Barbie's dream house <laughs> won't, won't have to have a full fledged internet gateway. It'll just have a single Bluetooth chip. <laughs> Much I, safer. I'm so pleased that you brought that back around. <laughs> <laughs> and that buttons it up guys. Um, so, uh, Hey, coming up uh, this week, want to give a shout, not this week, but uh, shout outs. I saw this, uh, a big event if you're a woman. Uh, Startup Weekend Pittsburgh Women is uh, now up. Just do a quick search for that. Friday, March 18th through the 20th uh, of this year. Uh, it, it, this is a great event. I, I was a judge on the civic event. Uh, Missy uh, actually uh, participated in the uh, last regular wide event uh, of Startup Weekend. It's a fun initiative. I know Google was a part of it. A lot of other uh, groups are a part of it. There's usually a really good keynote speaker, uh, a lot of networking, uh, and then then people go and pitch um, ideas uh, of various states. Sometimes there's 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 ideas that were just thought of that night in conversation during the networking, and and it's kind of one of those uh, boot camp weekend things. Let's see what we can get you for in in, in two days and forty eight hours, uh, jamming with uh, uh, people that uh, have businesses, created businesses, are are funding businesses, and uh, and and sometimes there's some companies that come out uh, uh, by the end. Um, Alana Diamond, who actually is from Alpha Lab Gear, just had a fortune to talk talk with the other day, uh, is one of the main speakers there and a whole host of event judges. If you're interested interested in starting a business and just want to kind of figure out how or you have one already you want to figure out the ins and outs of it or maybe you'll find yourself attached to one by the end of this um this is a good place to start uh if you're not in pittsburgh alex uh there are startup weekends all over the place whenever they they did this they do a map of here's all the other startup weekends around the world that are also happening right now so this is a big 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 time event um powered by google for entrepreneurs is the big uh, key sponsor on this one so go check it out do a quick search for uh, of course we're tweeting it as well from here and over on the podcast pittsburgh account uh startup weekend pittsburgh women and uh, uh go sign up for that as a participant or as a spectator um and i will be there 
uh, I will actually be helping out with the live stream as well. Oh, and you can check out the live stream. Uh, that'll be uh, shared out uh, via our good friends at Work Hard Pittsburgh. Uh, talk, speaking of which, I uh, talked with Professor Buzzkill on last week's awesome chat. Had a great chat with him about uh, his public uh, correcting public knowledge of history and his podcast. It's a very fun podcast. If you like history, uh, he takes a pretty fun approach to it. And uh, we have some other friends on there. Uh, Marta of Marta on the Move is a part of the show um, every once in a while as well. I think she just started on there. Uh, she was she, That was the very interesting week when we had uh, John Carmen on as well. <laughs> and things got um, sexy, I guess. Uh, you can roll back a couple episodes to find out what that was, was all about. And uh, we got some other fun, awesome chats coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have them actually stacked up here after tonight, so it's going to be pretty exciting. So keep an eye out for that. Um, you guys have any other events anybody should be aware of coming up? Chilla? No. Mobile Congress is this weekend, oh. starting Sunday. Samsung's announcements. Um, Samsung's announcements actually start I think at noon our time, Eastern Standard Time, because it'll already be next day in Barcelona, I think. At least that's I got I was told if I was in New York City I could come to a simulcast at noon on Sunday. So I'm guessing that it starts around then. Um also Microsoft is going to be announcing coming up um some some of their new devices. I think Alex and uh Crazy Krause could be right. We could be seeing a surface phone. Um, and then stay tuned because I'm sure right after World Mobile Congress, Apple's going to take a take a bite out of the news flow coming out of Barcelona, and we're quickly going to hear about their next announcement, probably coming March 15th. There you go. Find out the next Apple thing you're probably going to buy or what she could afford. Okay. Um, hey, can I throw a quick? Uh, uh, a side awesome thing, sort of, kind of. Um, I it's, it's your show. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's one way to put it. I, I just realized it was a weird part in the show for me to do it. Um, so I picked up an Audible this past week. Uh, there's this great book that just came out. By the way, if you're a reader, I recommend the book version of this, and I'll tell you why in a moment. It's called Follow the Geeks. It's um, it was a it was a it was a crowdfunded book um that was put together over this past year. Um, Jason Heiner was, was, I think the head person on this one. Uh, and he actually released it chapter by chapter. Um, and each one was a biography on somebody really big in the tech and geeky space. Baratunde Thurston, uh, who was a big part of, I think the onion and uh, was also part of the daily show for a brief period. Um, Gina Trapani of, uh, think up and, and, uh, actually founded life hacker, uh, Leah Laporte. I know I bring him up a lot uh, this week in tech and tech TV. Uh, uh, Tom Merritt with uh, Daily Tech News Show and all the way back to CNET. Um, I've I've gone about uh, two and a half chapters through this. Um, Really good book. Really good information. Loving the stories in it. Don't get the audio book from Audible. Um, it's, uh, it's It's not a good reader. It's it's not it's it's a very robotic emotionless reader. Um, it was funny because when I actually considered picking this up, I was going to go buy the Kindle version and just let the digital Kindle thing read to me. And I realized I might have been better off that way. Uh, so so definitely go check it, support it. Um, go just do a quick. Uh, I think it's uh, followthegeeksbook.com if you want to buy it directly from them. Um, so please go check it out. It, it's a really cool thing. And if you want to kind of see about the some of the luminaries in the tech industry that aren't Elon Musk. Um, I think it's a really good place to go. So, uh, with that, Alex Cars, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people check out what you're doing online? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, you can check out uh, my main kind of hub of everything over at my website, alexandercars.com. Uh, cars is K A H R S. Uh, I have uh, links to my portfolio and uh, other ways of getting a, a hold of me. You can find me on Facebook. And you can find me on Twitter at Alexander Carr. Awesome. Go check it out at Kate Dutters on the Twitters. Katie Dudas, also the Scarehouse Podcast. Fantastic Scarehouse Podcast lately. And oh, hey, we did a thing this weekend too that people could mm-hmm. go check we, out. We talked about Twitter and all the changes and whether we should panic. 
<laughs> if you're on the uh, if you're on the uh, uh, general feed for Awesome Cast, uh, you may have already seen a pop up, or, or maybe you just check in once a week. It's after this show. Uh, just look for on, over on AwesomeCast.net or whatever feed the uh, Awesome Cast Twitter special that we posted on Valentine's Day uh, here on this past Sunday. Uh, go check mm-hmm. that out, and K Dutters, and look for the Scarehouse Podcast on uh, fine podcast places. Uh, mm-hmm. Chilla at Chilla on the Twitters. John's Chilla on the Facebooks. Yeah. Chilla Dream And on Awesome Cast every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. <laughs> residing in the Chilla Dream House. Uh, <laughs> I'm at Sorgatron, Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com, SidekickMediaServices.com if you need some helpy help with some business business. Uh, and, of course, everything AwesomeCast.net. Subscribe to us. Check out the Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast if you want to contribute. And so many more options. Check out our friends and sponsors, uh, Slice on Broadway, The River's Edge, BoldPittsburgh.com. And uh, if you like this, you'll probably like Basic Sorg- Sorgonomics over at Sorgatron.com as well. I've been actually, actually, I recorded one for uh, uh, Wednesday this week. Uh, I got a little deeper into the Vite scheduling software that we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, some more of my uh, kind of insights on using that after a week's time. It's it's awesome. It's it's really, really working out for me. And as I was recording it, I found the pro features. Cause I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I don't know how they're paying for this. I don't see anything. And I'm clicking around as I'm, as I'm showing it off. I'm like, oh, look, pro features. <laughs> and I dropped right into it. Um, so it's kind of, live demos are fun, guys. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you to our awesome chat room. Join us live, sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, every Tuesday night about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.